It started out as a feeling, which then grew into a hope, which then turned into a quiet thought, which then turned into a quiet word. Hello, hello. What is up? Today we're going to be learning how to make a very simple nature scene in Blender. Nature scenes are a great addition to any portfolio, and if you can make a simple and photorealistic one, that's hitting the jackpot. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to make today. We're going to be making a very simple scene, just a leaf resting on top of a pond. It has just fallen in, so there are some ripples coming out of it, and there's going to be surrounded by a beautiful high dynamic range, uh, a beautiful HDRI, and you'll see the riverbed underneath. So let's get started. Open up Blender, make sure you're in the Cycles Render, and delete everything except the camera. So we're going to start by making the water. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the Wave modifier to generate the ripples, and then we're going to also use a Noise modifier in the textures to give it some displacement and make it look a little bit like water. Well, hopefully it'll look a lot like water since it'll be a photorealistic render, but whatever. So the first thing you want to do is add in a plane, scale it up a lot, and hit tab and subdivide it a couple times. Uh, you may need to subdivide it more at your discretion, but for now, a couple subdivisions will work. So now let's take a look at the modifiers tab. It's going to be on the right side of your screen in the properties panel. Uh, and you see we have a bunch of tabs here, and there's one tab that looks like a wrench. That is the modifiers tab. We have a bunch of things we can do to the mesh. Um, we can subdivide it, we can turn it into a wireframe, we can do all sorts of stuff to it, and there's a lot of very useful things in here, but for now, we're just going to use the wave modifier underneath the uh, deform category. So click on wave. And now, uh, since we're only doing a still, we're not doing a full animation, we're actually going to ignore the fact that this wave can move in a super cool fashion. Like how cool it is. Let's just watch it for a minute. Okay, anyway. So we're going to make it so that it's really only realistic in the frame that we're looking at it in, which is frame one. So Let's edit some of these settings. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the width and we're going to turn it all the way down to something that's barely visible, so about 0.04. Next thing we're going to do is play with the height, and this is why you, the number of subdivisions that you use uh, could, can affect the outcome of the render. There we go. Now we get something that's much more high resolution, so we get more ripples. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to play with the height until the ripples are barely showing and play with the narrowness. Okay, that looks that looks pretty good. So what the idea is, is that the leaf is going to be resting on top of these ripples as if it had just fallen in and caused a little disturbance in the water. So now you can change the number of ripples by playing with the speed, but this is going to be a very small leaf, so I don't think it's going to cause too many uh, ripples. And we're going to be looking at the ripples early in their propagation anyway, so. Okay, and finally, when you're done playing with the uh, settings to get something that you think will look good, just make sure there's a little raised bump in the middle, and that's what the leaf will rest on and be covering up. Okay, so we've got a nice looking uh, ripple here. Next thing we want to do is we want to maneuver the camera so that we're looking straight at the ripple, but we also don't want uh, the entire gray background here to be seen. We don't want any of that to be seen. So we're going to take this ripple and we're going to move it into the corner. This corner right here. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use this X and Y values here. So if we give it a position of about 0.5, see it moves it in the direction we want. If we give it a Y of negative 0.5, it puts it right nicely in the corner. Okay, so now position your camera so that you can see the ripples pretty close up but not the uh, not the background so and ah that is that looks good uh, you know I might even scale this up a little bit and the idea is you just want to keep playing with this until you get something that looks right okay all right I like the way that looks so we switch into rendered view we don't see much because we have zero lighting <laughs> um, except for the background which we're going to be playing with now so the next thing you want to do is go to the World tab in the Properties panel and click on Use Nodes 
and we're going to add an HDRI. Now, an HDRI is a great thing. It's not just a regular background image, it also encodes a lot of the information that the renderer needs to light the scene. So, uh, you can just look these up and download them easily. They're usually uh, .hdrs. That's the file extension that I usually use, that I usually try to uh, go for. But I will you link the one I'm using in the video description. But anyway, once you have it downloaded, go to color here, click on this little dot, and it lets us choose what kind of texture we want. So if we gave it, let's add a light to the scene real quick so we can so you can see what I'm demonstrating here. Okay. So if we gave it a uh, noise texture, it would look like this random garbage. If we gave it a magic texture or a sky texture, point density texture, we get all these different things. Uh, checker texture, you can probably guess what that does. Uh, I'm guessing you'd have to play with the scale here. And, oh. Ah, actually, so what we're looking at is, we're looking at the, because I'm dumb, <laughs> we're looking at the effect the lighting is having on the plane. And I, I don't know why I thought I was editing the material of the plane. But anyway, so you can see in the background now, this is what's happening. So checker texture, point density, that's just going to be like particles. Uh, image texture, that'll give you the pink thing until you select an image, brick texture, etc. But we're going to be working with the environment texture. <laughs> Switch back to bordered mode so we're not using too much of our CPU. Alright, and now open up your environment texture of choice. I'm going to be using, uh, let's see, I'm going to use this one because I want it to be set in a forest. And now if we switch out of, if we pan around, we can see we're in a forest. And the cool thing is this isn't just a 360 degree image. This encodes all the information that the scene needs to be lit, which is very, very, very useful. So we're going to be playing with the uh, strength of that in a moment, but let us add the final element to the scene, which is our leaf. So get out a rendered view. Uh, use Shift A and click on Mesh and then Plane to add a plane, which will be our leaf. And now place the plane, the center of the plane, vaguely in the center of the ripple, and maneuver it out of the ripple so that it's resting just on top of it. You can make this any size you want. I'm pretty happy with this size. All right. Okay. So now we're going to uh, add textures to the stuff in our scene. Uh, so we have we have to add textures to the water and to the leaf. So let's start with the leaf because that's the easier one in my opinion. Uh, first thing we want to do is tab into edit mode, hit U, and then click unwrap to unwrap the object. And now in the bottom left corner, you'll see these three little lines. Click and drag to split your view. Uh, and hit T with your mouse hovering over the right hand pane. Click to hit T to get rid of this toolbar off to the side and do the same thing over here. And on this side, go down into the bottom left corner again. Click on this little cube and switch to the node editor. Welcome to the node editor where all the scary stuff goes down. All the black market blender deals. All right. Now that we've got some lighting, we can make this work. So uh, click on this new texture down here, and we're going to call this texture to leaf. And I'm going to rename the plane that we're working with to leaf as well, so we can differentiate it from the water plane. All right. Now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, just hit Control t If you don't have it enabled, go to File, User Preferences, click on Add-ons, look for, in the search box, type Node Wrangler, and just check it, and then hit Save User Settings. And then when you go back, make sure you click on Diffuse and then hit Control-T. And it'll get these three nodes. Texture coordinate, mapping, and image texture. So we have UV unwrapped this, so we should get this pink looking thing. And the reason we have a pink thing is because we haven't selected an image. So the image you want to select is your leaf texture. So go into wherever you keep your textures. And I like to use a maple leaf because maple leaves look pretty. So this is actually looking really nice already, and I'm not even going to touch any of the UV mapping, but I am going to rotate this around the Z axis 180 degrees, so the leaf is facing towards us. I don't know, I just think it, I just think it looks pretty. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so that only the leaf portion of the image is visible, and the rest of it is transparent, because we don't want a big white thing sticking in our image. That's not realistic at all. So in the material, in the material node map, hit Shift A and then type Mix Shader to add a mix shader, and hit Shift A and type Transparent to add a transparent shader. Connect them together, and now we're going to try to tell the image where 
to become transparent and where to show the leaf. So shift A and add an RGB to black white node. And now shift A again and add a color ramp and we're going to use this color ramp to determine where the image is black and where the image is white. Okay, now plug in the color from the color ramp into the factor on the mix shader and plug in the color from the color ramp again into the surface. And down here in the right hand of the uh, right hand pane, click on this a uh, little viewport shading icon and switch to material view. So now we see we have a black and white leaf, which is uh, because of this color ramp node, and we've converted the image from color to black and white. And we're going. If you notice, if I play with the shaders, different parts of the material get highlighted in black and white. So I'm going to move the shader all the way over until all of the leaf is highlighted black. Uh, and this is a nice thing because uh, unfortunately it brings up the watermarks too, but those won't be noticed in the uh, final render hopefully. And now if we hit control shift and click on the mix shader and go into rendered mode, we'll see that only the part of the leaf that is colored is showing up. And that is exactly what we wanted. So this is looking pretty good already. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the water texture. Now, if you have a thin computer, <laughs> prepare for your fans to turn on because we're going to be using some glass textures and those are not friendly to CPUs or GPUs. So now that you, once you've selected the water, which I'm going to name water, add a new texture and we're going to call that creatively water. I'm just, I'm not creative, I'm just so creative. Okay, so now that we've uh, got this texture, we need to convert this diffuse shader into a glass shader. So hit sh click on the diffuse shader and hit shift S and scroll down to glass BSDF. And now we've got this gorgeous looking distortion. Uh, now, I believe water has an index of refraction of 1.350. I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure it has an index of refraction of 1.350. However, you can play with this and, and just try to get something that you think looks good. It doesn't, you don't have, even though you're trying to go for photorealism, something that I've noticed when I'm making photorealistic renders is that even if something is photorealistic, it might not be believable. So if you have to make a choice between making something that's believable and making something that's technically photorealistic, when you're trying to make a realistic render, go for what's believable. A classic example of this is um, in Star Wars, when the ships make sounds and they fly through space, it feels right because we feel like there should be a sound there, but sound doesn't travel in space. So that, and, but it would be weird if it was just silence as they were flying through. So anyhow, I'm shooting for beauty and realism as opposed to just pure stark photorealism, but an index of refraction of 1.350 I think looks nice. So now that we've got this index of refraction, we're going to add some ripples to the water. So just shift A and add a noise texture. And now we're going to take the, oh sorry, and also add a color ramp so we can convert the factor from this noise texture into a color. And now you can see that the water has become wavy. And I'm going to unplug this so you can see it's flat now. And now it becomes wavy. And you can play with this to, uh, make it look however you think is nice. Um, I usually set it to around 6 just to make the ripples a little bit more, but if, if you turn it up like to 400, you're going to get something hideous. If you turn it to like 20, you can get something that actually looks pretty nice. Uh, yeah, this looks very nice, but uh, for, in my opinion, the size of the, uh, the size of the leaf in comparison to the ripples is a little uh, unrealistic. So I'm going to leave it at around 6, so just some gentle waves. And now we've already got a pretty good, uh, a pretty good, pretty good water scene there. I'm gonna move the uh, leaf here so that's a little more flush with the surface of the water. Okay, so unfortunately, this, what's unreal, something that's unrealistic about the scene is that we can kind of see through the water, which is what you know glass does. But we can also like see trees and stuff, which doesn't make any sense because there aren't really trees underwater. Um, you know what I mean. Usually there's a riverbed or something. So we're going to add a riverbed. So hit shift A and add a plane. And you can see it's perfectly in line with this. So you just want to pull it a little bit, maybe about one or two units below, and scale it up so that it covers up all of the camera. All right, that's good. And now we're going to turn this into a riverbed. So add a new texture, call it riverbed, rename the plane to riverbed, perfect. And now hit Control T on the diffuse shader. Uh, 
select your riverbed texture, which I will also include in the uh, description below, so never fear. Use this. And I'm going to change the scale to something like 5 or 6, because it, if it's too big, you can kind of see like the pixelation, which isn't good. And you can either switch it from generated, from UV to generated on this texture coordinate node, but I just, I'll just UV unwrap it. Uh, object has negative scale. Okay. Uh, let's hope that doesn't affect it. <laughs> All right. And now we've got a very nice looking, uh, very nice looking scene there. However, I noticed something fishy with the ripples. So if you notice, the uh, ripples here look very, very, they don't look very realistic. So potentially this can be fixed by playing with their width. They do seem a little bit wide. So let's try to make them a little more narrow. Alright, and let's see how that works. Hmm, that does not improve it much. Uh, perhaps if we just raise the height a little bit. Alright. <clears throat> okay, that's looking a little bit very nice. Uh, sorry, so it seems like this is going to take a little bit of time for the computer to render because they're very light heavy. Okay, and you know what? I'm actually going to do something that hopefully will make the scene look a little bit better. So you notice that there's like this white patch over here. That's actually light reflecting from the HDRI. And I want that to be more in the scene because I think that would look nice. So uh, in your node editor, go to the world uh, shader, which is down here in this bottom uh, menu. And on the environment texture, hit control T and that'll generate a mapping node, which we, which we can use to uh, move that white light around. So I'm gonna, Play with the Z until it's about there, which I think looks pretty nice. And now I'm going to <clears throat> now I'm going to add some depth of field. Uh, and unfortunately, depth of field is pretty hard to uh, to gauge in uh, the real real time render without the real time like the viewport render view. Ooh. Which, uh, because uh, depth of field adds a lot to the render time, because it's kind of like trying to authentically blur it. But anyway, so click on the camera, right click on the camera, and uh, go to the camera tab over here. And for the focus under uh, depth of field, select the leaf. So now, if we turn the size of the, uh, if we turn the size of the depth of field like the, the radius of the depth of field up to 0.01, and you know what, let's put it to 0.1 so the effect is more obvious. We can notice that the stuff in the distance, the water that's further away, is blurrier than the water and the leaf that's closer to the camera. And that is exactly what we want. <clears throat> so, we're going to set this to render, and once that is done, and by the way, you can play with the, uh, ooh, what's this? Did I leave the, uh, <laughs> what did I leave? Uh, okay. No, that looks about right. Okay. So, set it to render, and I'll be back with you in a moment to show you some simple compositing we're going to do to the scene. All right, and we're back. So, taking a look at this render, doesn't look fantastic yet. And to be honest, with the short amount of tweaking I put into this for the uh, for like the tutorial video, it's probably not going to look great. Uh, it really usually comes down to how much tweaking you're willing to put into the uh, how much tweaking you're willing to put into the render, because things aren't going to look good unless you make them look good, and you know. You gotta add your artistic element to the scene, but this gets this communicates the methods that I use to make the scene at the beginning enough. 
So a couple things to note. First of all, you see these weird square reflections? That's not good. The way to get rid of those is to go to the 3D view, right click on your uh, right click on your on your water and hit smooth shading. So hopefully when you re-render it, that'll uh, get rid of them. But that's not that doesn't affect the compositing too much right now. And another way to get rid of them is to add a subdivision surface modifier. All right, so let us switch back to the render and do some compositing. Okay, so you know my screen's a little small right now, so this might be a tight fit. Okay, so in the bottom menu here on your in your node editor, switch to the compositor, compositing nodes, and hit use nodes. And if you want, you can add a backdrop, uh, which will add the the render result in the background if you include a viewer node in the scene. But for now, I'm just going to use this. So the first thing we're going to add is glare, and we're going to add a lot of it. The reason we're going to add a lot of it is because later on, when we do the Filmic Blender add-on, uh, it's going to crush the blacks in the scene and spike up the contrast. So let us switch this to Fog Glow and turn the threshold down to zero. So this looks a lot brighter, but if you go over the Properties panel here and hit Scene, and go down to color management and change the render view from default to filmic, you can see that it's going to dim it a lot, which looks a lot better than it was before. So, yes, that looks much better. Okay, so now we're going to add in an RGB curves node so we can color grade the scene. So, I personally like to have my nature scenes with a touch more blue in them. I think it makes it look a little more uh, colder and a little more realistic. Uh, and this looks pretty good. If I was re-rendering this, I would probably make the leaf a little bigger, but what can you do? And now finally, if you want to mimic some camera effects, uh, just hit Shift A and then type in Lens Distortion to add a Lens Distortion node. Then click uh, on Dispersion and change the value to something like 0.02 or 0.03 and hit Fit. And the effect that that will have is on the corner of the image, the, uh, the textures will break apart into red, green, and blue more. So if we turn this up to like 0.05, you can see that a little bit more, but that would just look unrealistic, so leave it around 0.02. Alright, and that's pretty much it. That's how you make a very simple nature scene in Blender. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments uh, or feedback or things I could have done better, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I always I always try to read them, so and you know I use a lot of uh, tips that you guys give me in my in the tutorials I make, so I appreciate them a lot. You guys are the best. Thank you for 200 subscribers. Pretty amped about that. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Uh, I'm going to keep making videos for you guys, and I hope you keep benefiting from them. If you guys haven't already, check out my latest render. It's called uh, All the Life We Cannot See. Uh, I just uploaded the render breakdown for it, so if you're interested in how these scenes are made, go ahead and check that out. So thanks again for watching. See you next time. All you can do is try to know who your friends are as you head on. Star on the dark horizon and fire